Hey everyone, Koopsie from the whole box and dice. Hopefully you all enjoyed the Goku Black Zamasu Rose SR no promo video. Well, this one is going to be around everyone's either favorite or most hated card right now. <laughs> Barbity, we're going to be using the leader from the first set. This one is Super Saiyan's uh, God Son Goku. Very interesting leader. We're going to be really looking to abuse the ramp aspect of this deck. It's definitely a different deck to the uh, the Babidi Goku Black deck um, in the sense that the Goku Black deck is obviously hurting itself to get the benefit of awakening and ramping that way. This deck makes use of the defensive properties of the untap energy, either one on the uh, front side and two on the back. And whilst they have very similar goals of getting out of Babidi as early as possible, they definitely have some slight different play styles and nuances to each deck. So let's have a look at the leader. We'll jump straight into it. This one is Super Saiyan God Son Goku. As I said, when this card attacks, choose up to one of your blue energy and switch it to active mode. When your life is four or less, draw two cards. And then the leader back during your turn, if you have five or more energy, your card gains 5,000 power. Energy of any color, take note. And when this card attacks, draw one card. Choose up to two of your blue energy, however, and switch them to active mode. And that's a large part of the value that we're looking to get out of the deck. The fact that you can swing with your leader, irrespective of whether our opponent negates the attack or not, you have the ability to refresh some energy and there are some absolute shenanigans that we can do with that. I'm going to start off with the extra cards and it's going to be three copies of Weiss's Coercion. I do like to be able to play some defense in the deck and either side of our leader can untap us enough energy to fire one of these off. Try to avoid charging these cards as it is nice to be able to play back-to-back -back negates on our opponent. Running four copies of Sensor Bean, this is a super vital card in the deck. And once we've gone through all the cards, I'll explain exactly what we're trying to do. But being able to buff up our leader and get that extra energy untapped is great. Running a playset of Objections, the deck's all about ramp, so there's no reason why we wouldn't be running four copies. You do lose the resources from the hand, but we do look to... Uh, Mitigate that with our Bubbities. And two copies of Result of Training. Obviously, the big difference between this deck and the Goku Black deck is that we can't self-awaken. If our opponent's not attacking us, it is nice to be able to grab a card like Result to do so. It is something that you definitely want to hold on to. Even if you are in an aggro matchup, you can then charge it once you have awakened. But just in case your opponent tries to stall you out on five, important to have the Result in your deck because it is a key card. Three copies of Bulma, the God Tempter. We want to be able to see our Weiss resting attendance. So we're running three ways to tutor it up. Obviously, uh, the blue energy helps as well. Plus, it's a 5k pump. Running a playset of Unyielding Spirit Trunks. Running a blue leader. Why not take advantage of being able to untap an energy for free? Plus, another 5k pump. Three copies of Weiss, the resting attendant. Like I said, we're all about that ramp. We're trying to get to Bubbity. So Weiss is a key card, and being able to tutor it up with Bulma is obviously great. Play set of the boost attack Piccolos. We do need to play some defense sometime or have a just a way, I guess, to pump our lethal kill shot. Boost attack Piccolo is the best way to do this. And that pretty much concludes the non-bubbly part of the deck. So let's get to the part that you've all been waiting for. We start off with a play set of the evil wizard Bubbity. My controlling Bubbity is a six drop. When you play this card, look at the top seven cards of your library. Pick two red battle cards with 25k power or less other than Bubbity and put them onto the battlefield. Shuffle your library. How do we get the most benefit of that? Well, we're going to start off with Jiren, which is one of the few cards that you probably regularly consider actually just playing before you even get Bubbity out. Jiren the Fist of Justice is just a great card. I feel like this card should have been triple red in all seriousness. A 20k double striker that can attack active battle cards and gets 30k for the first time you do, plus effectively gets dual attack. Um, when you do attack a battle card, is just absolutely nuts. Running two copies of the Relentless Super Saiyan um, 3 Sun Goku. I like that it can't be KO'd by your opponent's skills. They're very handy against the Cell matchup. It does hold its 25k power until the next turn that it comes back to you. Running a playset of Super Saiyan Ghost Tanks, Five drop triple red. Um, when you have four or less cards in your hand, all of your ghost tanks gain double strike. I feel like maybe the auto should have also been linked to the number of cards in your hands. If you didn't have four or less cards in hand, you shouldn't have been able to create the ghost tokens. But the card's absolutely nuts. If your opponent doesn't have a sense of being, they are going to be in a lot of trouble. 
This is, I think, where the deck starts to differentiate away from a couple other lists, and you'll probably see um, the next cards a little bit closer to my original uh, Goku Black list. We're running a playset of Destructive Terra Champa, 25k. It's the triple strike that we're really looking for here. The fact that it nukes the board is just added bonus. Playset of these guys is just nuts. We're only running three copies of the Miraculous Comeback Ultimate Gohan. At the end of the day, yes, we can cast this just for double red, but I feel like sometimes it's kind of easy to fall into the Gohan kill their battle cards trap. Um, and so I think three copies is the right amount because I did want to fit in two copies of Repeated Force Vegito, another 25k triple striker. And this is what we're really looking to do, you know, get our opponent down to three and then finish them off with a Champa or a Vegito, plus the ability to potentially pull two of these, or if we are playing back to back. Champers or back-to-back -back Vegitos, the ability to put that pressure that they have two lethal strikes at that 25k mark is absolutely huge. Okay, so you've had a chance to see the deck now, and I know what you're probably thinking. Coops, it is just another Barbity deck. We play Barbity, we win the game. It's pretty straightforward. Well, the deck does have a little bit of secret tech in there that, even though it's not in a card that I haven't revealed to you, it's just in one of the synergies and combos that you can pull off with your leader. When your leader has been awoken, um, or if you can play results to enable it to do so, you have an opportunity that when you get to eight energy, and you can do it on less energy, but eight is a pretty safe number. If you have two Barbadies and two Sensor Beans in hand, you can play your first Barbadie, swing with your leader, untap two blue, play double Sensor Bean, untap four energy, you're back to six energy, and you can cast two Barbadie in one turn. Now you notice this Barbity deck has a lot more hits than some of the other Barbity decks that you see going around. I've seen decks with 14, 15, 16 targets. I think we have 19 targets in the deck. We're also not running any of like the Gohans or the Carbers. So all our hits are huge, hopefully game ending threats. And your opponent, maybe they do have a Bloodlust. Maybe they do have a Crusher Ball, uh, depending on how they're actually going to rule that for the first Barbity but they will not have an answer to two Barbities in one turn. And against decks like Cell, against decks like Zamasu, you know, these decks that don't have access to Cold Blood Dust, when you are guaranteed to resolve two Barbities and you pull out something like three Champers and a Ghost Tanks, that is just insanity. You know, the, the pressure that you can put, especially on a Zamasu, you know, you're looking for those triple strikers so they can never get a chance to awaken. You're just killing them at 10k. You know, playing double ghost tanks and having six ghost tokens in a deck that doesn't play sensor bean, for example. You know, that's that, those kind of plays will just absolutely just shift the match. And yes, you hurt yourself by playing objection in this deck versus Goku Black. You burn more cards out of hand. You have less resources to work with. But the potential, and I've pulled this off multiple times, the potential for double Barbity or even Barbity on curve and then next turn Double Barbity, you can use the um, Trunks as well when you combo to untap energy. Obviously need a few more Trunks to make, um, you know, you need two Trunks and one Sensor Beam, but you still get the same effect. You know, you have eight cards that enable you for this potential Double Barbity, and that it's just game winning. It's, just, it's actually game over, you know. I definitely think the original um, Barbity Goku Blacklist I posted and there was some revisions to that. People took that deck and they changed it up a little bit, you know, adding in cards like the promos. Yes, if you have that card, that's a great addition to that deck. But this deck doesn't actually need any promos. You know, you firstly, you don't really want to ping, I guess, that extra life because you don't have that payoff with your leader um, in terms of getting down to the double strike 20k. And... The deck plays a little, I guess, less defense. Plus, we want to use our sensor beans offensively to get double barbity. So we have less of those resources um, in terms of actually being able to, you know, just to be able to, uh, I guess, survive. You know, we have three negates. So we're just not as well stocked. And we are a little bit more in on the barbity combo. But the, but I guess the, the devastation that we can pull off on a double barbity far outweighs that. And I actually think this deck is a better deck than the Goku Black for two reasons. Firstly, um, no promo, so just purely from a financial and an entry getting into the game makes it a lot easier to play. But the, and I, I see a lot of comments about this, you know, like every day there is at least two or three threads. Goku Black is a combo tempo control deck. Um, and their 
three words that shouldn't ever be in a sentence together. It's tempo based because you need to be getting more value than your opponent out each turn. And that's not just Bubbity. Um, it's control because you do have cards like Jiren in the deck to be able to remove their active battle cards. Um, and it's obviously a combo deck because the deck is centered around playing Bubbity. Now, Cold Bloodlust exists and that's a card that you need to respect, but you can play that deck and go in there knowing that, all right, if I lose all four Barbadies to Bloodlust, I can still win this against Tricolor Ginyu, against Green Yellow Ginyu, even against Ginyu Rush. But you have to firstly understand your opponent's deck um, on a level that I just don't think a lot of players go into matches with that level of innate understanding of the 50 cards sitting across the table from you. And you need to really not get trigger happy on Bubbity and not just be like slapping down Bubbity and this will win me the game. Because if you don't have a get out of, I guess, jail free card on the back of a Bubbity, you can get burned. And this is where this this Goku um, comes into effect because you have the ability to use the untap two or even untap one to play a Sensu, bring two online to get into some Weezus coercion even just a combo with your big 10k pumps that you'll definitely have in hand, you have some flexibility around that. So I think this deck is a little bit easier to play as well because you have the ability to pull off some of those moves and the deck isn't as punishing if you get caught tapping down. So hopefully between this and the Goku Black Zamasu Rose deck, you've got a couple of ideas for some decks that you can play that aren't promo dependent. They do require some SRs. This one is still a very expensive deck. There's Double Vegito, there's Triple Gohan, Ghost Tank's one of the most expensive rares in the set. I didn't say necessarily these decks will be cheap, unfortunately, but they do have no promos in them. So if you don't have any of those cards, these are cards that you can just open straight out of booster packs from set one and set two. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, this one and the Smasu. Uh, very interesting decks, very different decks, but definitely have um, you know similar themes to them. And they actually use a lot of the same cards, a lot of the same base exists in both these decks. So if you do end up you know, purchasing one of these decks or purchasing the Skeleton, the Ramp, and the Boost, and the Negates, you can actually move into both decks, which I like as well. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you are new. Let me know in the comments what did you think of this and the Goku Black Zamasu Robes build. Check us out on Patreon if you want to support the channel. Hit us up on the socials. If you want to chat anything Dragon Ball Super, my name is Coops. This is the whole box and dice. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Peace.